Great, thank you so much. So again, thanks to everybody for joining this webinar. Uh, this is SDL Machine Translation, and what we're going to talk about is that intersection of neural machine translation and linguistic AI, but most specifically, how we're advancing the MT evolution, and you'll hear more about that as we go on. So let's start by talking about the general market trends. We talk about enterprise trans machine translation. Why do we need enterprise machine translation? What role does it play in the technology space? The first is content. That's really the first thing that why machine translation and why we need this enterprise machine translation, right? Content that is growing in volume, variety, and velocity. Next, an evolving regulatory environment an increasing focus on privacy and security. And this focus is being driven by consumers, right, the consumers in the market, as well as by organizations, and we'll talk about that in a bit as well. Omnimarket, what does that mean? It's a hyper-competitive environment, so reaching a global audience, it's not really a nice to have anymore. It's not something you think about later. It's something that we need to think about upfront. And the fourth is linguistic AI. And we'll touch upon that throughout the presentation. And my colleague Quinn will talk about that in a bit more depth. So let's talk about content explosion. And I'm sure this is not new to anybody in the audience. But here's a statistic that I recently ran across. So 90% of the data that we have available was created in the past two years. So just kind of think about that statistic. This is something that is from 2018. So now in 2020, I'm sure that volume of content is even greater. We create 2.5 quintillion bytes of data each and every day. Much of that data is captured as words or created as words. And that amount is growing and will continue to grow exponentially. So it's not just the volume, and that's kind of scary volumes we're talking about here. It's also the speed and the variety of the content. Our expectations as consumers drives what we expect from technology, right? So we expect real-time interactions on our terms and our language. And that means that we as organizations need to make sure that we have an efficient way of delivering that. Now, last but not least is variety. So as a marketer, I leverage a variety of communication formats and channels, documents, email, images, chatbots, virtual assistants, et cetera. All are the various ways that messages and are being conveyed from an organization to its customer and within an organization itself. So those are the three things that we keep in mind when we think of enterprise machine translation as opposed to machine translation that may be more of a utility, right? So the next is security. So why is that relevant? It's about cost, but that cost is much more than just the loss that you receive um, from maybe violating a regulatory, um, maybe you violate a regulation and there's a cost there. Maybe you've lost some records and there's a cost in terms of litigation, et cetera. The cost can be much deeper than that if you think about it. So these are statistics from IBM's cost of data breach report that they do, I think, every year. So 2019, the cost of a data breach about on average is about 4 million. But what's interesting is that 40% of the total cost is customer defection. It's that loss of trust that leads to defection. And that's, I would say, it's um, not necessarily a hidden cost, but it's a cost that we sometimes don't think about and we don't get as worried about, right? We sometimes we think that security is something for IT to think about, but I would say it needs to be much broader than that. Those of us in customer experience, et cetera, we know it takes a lot, it's a lot harder to bring a new customer on board than to retain an existing customer. So when we think about security, it's everybody's concern, right? And the reason we talk about security is we often find that an organization will rely on open source portals where data that is entered may not necessarily be 100% secure. It may actually leak out into the public space. So that is why we stress security quite a bit. And we think about those costs. A lot of the, uh, one third of the cost of the data breach affects the company beyond the year when the breach actually occurred. 
So as time goes on, we t take security a lot more seriously, if you will. So the third thing we talked about is this omni-market. Why is that important? Content language is a significant purchase driver. It has been for quite some time. So Common Sense Advisory has some statistics that we've captured here. More than 50% of consumers will not make a purchase, uh, will, not, will not buy a product unless they have that information in their own language, right? So one of the things that we talk about omni-market is being omni-market by design. So rather than adding markets languages as you need them or as you enter the market, really thinking about that in advance. So making sure that your products and your services and the information you want to give that global marketplace is available in the language that the consumer wants, right? So if you think about the drive to personalization that happens within e-commerce that's happening within marketing, language is probably the most personal personalization you can have, right? So linguistic AI will cover throughout, right? So I wanted to talk about what brings us here today. SDL machine translation as an essential enterprise technology. We're going to talk about what's new, what's ahead, um, but what I want everybody to kind of come away with, and remember, it's an essential enterprise technology that combines neural machine translation with linguistic AI within an enterprise-ready platform to remove language barriers from some of the most content-intensive business functions. And I'll come back to this a couple times. So it's thinking about analytics, customer experience, enterprise communication, e-discovery. Now, for those who are already familiar with SDL machine translation, and for those who may be a bit new to this, I wanted to just go over the pieces of the product itself. So SDL machine translation has two distinct but complementary deployment options. We have SDL machine translation edge, that's the on-premise or, or privately hosted variation, if you will, deployment option. And we also have SDL machine translation cloud which is hosted by SDL, of course. So for those who have been a customer for a bit or those who are familiar with these products, SDL Machine Translation Edge ha was known as Enterprise Translation Server or ETS and SDL Machine Translation Cloud was known as Be Global. So that's what we have in market today. So when we think about what makes up SDL Machine Translation and what makes it the most scalable, secure solution for enterprise needs. One is, of course, languages. We support an ever-growing number of language pairs and language pair combinations. And we've added some features that extend that well beyond what you see on this particular page. And Quinn will cover that later. Um, and this is fully trainable, right? We let you control that experience. We cover all of the file types you can imagine. So documents, Word, Excel, PowerPoint, Integrated Optical Character Recognition, or OCR, where we can translate images and scan PDFs. And we have alignment with folks like Nuance, which allows us to uh, do uh, work with speech recognition, right? So you can have the smooth workflow from speech to translate a text, right? And so it's possible to translate audio files and all sorts of content. We have uh, a complete technology framework that is research developed by SDL. We rely on Neural Machine Translation 2.0. Uh, we have adaptable models. So we'll talk a bit about th what that means. Uh, dictionaries, uh, rich APIs, et cetera. It's really a solid enterprise foundation on which we grow. Tons of out-of-the-box integrations to make sure we can weave into your workflow. And it is an enterprise-ready solution. It was developed with the enterprise in mind, providing those flexible deployment options. Our edge cloud deployment architecture means you can do any kind of deployment model you want, secure and scalable. So I wanted to talk a bit about the intersection of innovation and quality, right? So NMT or Neural Machine Translation 2.0 for us represents a huge leap in quality over its predecessor, which in and of itself was a huge leap over the legacy SMT. Now what we've seen is with adaption, adaptation and customization, we can increase that quality even further, right? 
But what I wanted to talk just a bit about is thinking about quality and how we measure quality, right? We often see that customers turn to automated metrics. They're attempting to measure how close to translation perfection the software can get. And it's looking at the difference between machine-generated output and human-translated uh, output, right? Now, it's certainly valid. It's certainly absolutely important. We have to get the words right. And we at SDL do that. The degree of accuracy may vary. And there's certainly trade-offs. But what we have seen time and again is that for any technology, including machine translation, especially when we consider the enterprise use cases that we need to adapt to, the most important measure of quality that we need to realize is ROI. Of course, there's not really a common ROI yardstick, but we'll talk about some ways to think about it. Now, from just a pure competitive automated quality testing perspective and what we achieve in output um, accuracy, if you will, we did just complete a competitive automatic quality test assessment with SDL versus some of our um, some other vendors. We have the report on our community and we have a link to the community that we will make available to everybody if you don't have it already. We hope you take a look at the results. What we found is that SDLMT consistently outperformed the others in blue and uh, LEPOR, LEPR, which are both popular automated metrics. Now, the reason that we achieve these results is because we are continually updating training sources. We're looking, we're implementing better data cleansing, processing routines, customer training uh, techniques to handle outliers, et cetera. We're very proud of our achievement of the scores, but the true test is the ROI and what we can do for our customers. Right. So one thing we've added last year is the ability to adapt models to your own data to raise the quality and make it more nuanced to what you need. So we found that generic models give you a certain amount of quality. Domain models cover a specific domain very well. Now, the adaptable model, that's kind of where the magic happens, right? So last year, we launched adaptable language pairs, and we have a lot of information on that specific feature in market. It provides the ability to adapt models within the software itself securely without the need to share data with any third party. So that's one way we're giving the control of quality, which we've already achieved, to you as well. Now let's talk about ROI a bit. When we think of ROI, we think of it as quality that actually matters. It's quality that matters to the bottom line. And the business ROI depends on the use case. It depends on that enterprise application. So for example, within customer experience, reducing time to a global market. For analytics, making sure that you get to that global insight faster and you can achieve global insight as opposed to just looking at what you can understand, right? <clears throat> On the internal communication collaboration, being able to increase that, being able to bring everybody across the globe into the decision-making process. And we have a number of uh, stories with our customers that illustrate these really well. So an ex one example is Celebrate. They provide digital intelligence solutions. For them, SDL machine translation allowed them to realize a shorter time to those global insights for their information consumers. So they're able to develop a smart translator um, and that smart translator works with their um, digital forensic investigation solutions and allows investigators to understand text and understand data captured in other languages much faster than through human translation. Another really good example is the U.S. Army. And here they're looking at global collaboration and communication. So the U.S. Army was faced with a language barrier in the field. They're working out in Korea, right? Officers had access to translators, but enlisted personnel were struggling to understand each other. What we were able to do is actually integrate SDL machine translation into their chat client, into this chat software that the Army used to facilitate communication between personnel in the field. And now everybody, regardless of rank, is able to collaborate and communicate across the language barrier. And as you can imagine, in the field, misunderstanding or not being able to collaborate across those language barriers can be very costly, right? 
And last, but certainly not least, Best Buy Canada. So they were able to use machine translation to significantly reduce time to their global market, right? They achieved a 43% cost reduction, and they found that they're actually able to translate 90% of their content using machine translation. And what happened there is that they have a commit to translate content, uh, seven, uh, translate content from English to French within 72 hours across their web SKUs. During the holidays, there was an unexpected content surge that they had a hard time trying to kind of keep track of. So machine translation was able to shorten that time to insight, shorten that time to value considerably. So we're constantly innovating and adding features and functions that our customers request and the market needs. So we have re we've released a new version of SDL machine translation, and I'm going to go ahead and turn the presentation over to my colleague, Quinn, and she's going to talk about what's new and a bit of what's ahead. Quinn? All right, thank you, Jane. Hi, everybody. Thank you for joining us today. Um, so I will have this section to go over what is new with SDL machine translation. And I will also share with you a little bit um, of a preview into what we are working on behind the scene, leveraging our linguistic AI capability and bringing it into our machine translation products. So in terms of what new, uh, we have released to SDL MT Edge, and it will be coming soon to SDL Language Cloud a feature in which we enable our users to translate from quote unquote, any to any language pair direction. Um, and this features allow the user to basically connect any available language pairs that SEO offer in our product offering um, so that you can chain and create more combination and then get a greater breadth of coverage using our product. So SDL, at SDL, our MT offering has 51 languages. Um, and from in terms of a direct language pair combination, as you've seen in the previous slide, we had over 120. What this feature does is that it allow us to make any kind of combination, increasing our breadth of coverage now to the fact that you can translate over 2,500 a combination of source to target language pairs. And the interesting thing about this feature, um, and this is not a, exactly a brand new concept in the machine translation world, uh, but now that we are in neural machine translation, we are seeing that this feature brings the value in which it gives you the greater breadth of coverage without sacrificing quality as it had before in legacy system. Because the quality degradation with neural machine translation does not compound the way that the previous phrase-based statistical MT does. For languages where there are little data to build a direct language pair model, we have observed that the language pair chaining approach for this any-to-any -any language pair direction actually provides better translation than direct pair. And I'll just show you a quick preview of how we do this um, and just kind of show you the concept first. So pretty much in a language pair, um, you know, we have the language pair that is available. For, for example, here, we have a language pair that's go from German to English and English to Russian. With chaining, we allow you to take these two, chain them together to create a new language pair direction for German to Russian. And the chain pairs can be managed manually or automatically in the empty edge. Um, and here's a screenshot of them administrative view where you can see when you toggle on auto manage chain, it will look through all the language pair that you have in your deployment and automatically create a chain. Alternatively, if you only want your users to have access to a certain combination, then you can just simply enable the chain and manage that chaining direction yourself. Um, and the thing with the auto managed chain is that it automatically chained it through English. Uh, let's say if you have a language pair that is you know, English to French, uh, I'm sorry, German to French, and French to Russian, then you actually can uh, you can enable in your UI to do the chain through the French language instead. Um, and the chain LP uh, can be used immediately in the translation screen. Um, as soon as you create the chain LP, they're also available through the API, and you're able to use the endpoint to query and get a list of the languages that you can translate to, saving you time from doing another stop um, and actually also enable you to use the dictionary feature on the chain LPs. 
So the use case and benefits of Chain LP, um, you know, it helped us meet the customer requirements for languages where we don't have a direct language pair available. Again, traditionally, historically, most of the machine translation language pair have English somewhere as either the source or the target. Um, so with the chain, we're allowed any to any language pair combination. Um, and the new language pair combination with this chain feature is available immediately for use. So you don't need to wait for the language pair to be developed um, or to be created uh, by us. Uh, you can automatically do it yourself within the user interface. Um, and as I mentioned, this feature is available today on the MT Edge, and it will be coming soon to the MT Cloud. Another feature that we have released and is available on both MT Cloud and MT Edge is the single sign-on feature. Um, and this feature is definitely oriented toward our enterprise customers. Um, you know, this allows users to log in with their existing identity provider credentials. Um, single sign-on benefit is that from a user experience perspective, it's a one-click to log in. Um, and from a more administrative, uh, technical consideration, we do support SAML version two. And so with SAML version two support, Basically, SDL machine translation can integrate with our enterprise external identity providers um, to allow their users to navigate from application to application that share that same identity provider as an authentication method um, so that they don't have to always click log in. Um, it also allowed that identity a, a provider to manage the users as well as the password complexity and uh, exploration, et cetera. Uh, and so this is just a few screenshots to show you how it works with the single sign-on login. So some of the benefits of the single sign-on, um, and again, it's one of the more popular features that our enterprise um, leverage as soon as we had released it. Uh, for the users, uh, from, you know, again, enabling the MT application to their end users, um, it's convenient. Right? There's less application-specific credentials that the users need to keep track of. Um, speed, they only use one click to log in. There's no need to enter authentication information. And as I mentioned, if they are already logged into another application, then re redirecting over to the MT user interface, actually skip the authentication altogether and they don't even need to click a button for log logging in. Um, and security, there's a peace of mind that there's one less system that does not have their password store. And for IT management, uh, truly, you know, this feature speaks to what they care about and what they um, look for when they deploy an enterprise-wide solution is they look, you know, it gives them simplicity. Uh, the admins no longer need to manage user credentials and access manually within the MT application. They do it through that centralized identity provider database that they leverage. Uh, consistency, again, they leverage that existing database. So when the organization onboard new employees um, or has to remove an employee who has left, um, they only do it within one system rather than going through the different applications and make sure that it's up to date. Um, and control, every organization has their own policies on password complexity. Uh, pass, password renewals. Um, so this allowed them to keep control so that the empty application follows the same password controls that they set across the organization. Another big feature that we have introduced into the product and specifically just for the MT Edge is what we call the interactive translation editor. Um, and it's important to note that this feature focus specifically on enabling non-professional translators to edit and revise the machine translation output more effectively within the MT interface. Uh, the stored edit segments are, are saved for reuse. Um, and that, that stored edited segments um, being stored in a translation memory allow our customer to continuously adapt the language pair model by training with what we call the adaptable language pair. Um, so I'll just walk through the concept um, really briefly here. So in a legacy document processing workflow with machine translation only, the user would have a document and it would send it over to the machine translation edge. 
and there they would get the translation translated document back. The benefits here um, is that it's easy to use. Everything's fully automated, uh, and the user interface is really intuitive. Um, everything turn around really quick. Uh, but the challenge here is that if the user has some, you know language knowledge, let's say they're bilingual, but they're actually not a professional translator, and they spot some errors in which they can correct in the translated document, um, they're not really able to post edit it within the interface itself. And any edits they make will be local and used by them only. So in a legacy document processing workflow, on the other side that we're familiar with translation management system and machine translation, in these scenarios, right, you have your machine translation system and you have your translation management system or your CAT tool. And the user who, uh, would upload the document to the TMS or the CAT tool, get it pre-processed, and within that TMS or CAT tool, it would leverage translation memory and anything else that there is not a translation memory match for uh, would be sent out to get the machine translation output. And from there, the user would get a document within that interface in which they can post edit and save back to the translation memory. Um, and you know that would be their final translation translated document. So the benefits of this workflow is that the user does have a complete translation workflow with post editing capabilities. The challenge here though, of when we talk to many of our customers who are more interested in the automated translation capability is that in this workflow, they did felt that the overhead and the processing is a, it's a little bit more than what they need. Um, and the challenge here is that they do feel that this overall workflow is more catered to the professional translators. Um, so what we did was we bridged that user experience for them, leveraging the user interface that they were familiar with and that they wanted to use as their primary interface for achieving quick translation and only post edit when they need it. And so this is where we introduce the interactive edition feature. So within this feature, a user will send a document to the machine translation edge. The machine translation edge will orchestrate that document, send it over to the CAT tool or the TMS. From there, again, the same flow happening behind the scene that's transparent to the user will leverage the translation memory that exists if available. And then it will populate the remaining segment with machine translation. And this enabled the users now to use the interactive translation editor within the empty edge interface. So that brings the document back to the empty edge where the user, if they like, can do the post edit online. Then any edit they did would automatically get updated to the translation memory and they would get the updated document uh, within the edge interface again. So basically the user will live and see everything within the empty edge interface. And so the benefits of this workflow for our non-professional translator users is that it is a one single user interface, the empty edge. Um, it allows the complete translation workflow uh, without all the overhead, and it has the simple post edit user interface that they can do some light editing on. Um, and anything that get commit can save to the translation memory that then allow them to use uh, our adaptive language pair feature to update the language pair in the future. So here's a quick um, walkthrough of the user interface, um, just to show you again how easy and intuitive it is to use this feature. So the screen you see here is the user interface for the machine translation edge product. So the user would just go to the click uh, settings, choose the option to use the interactive translation editor only. So ask means, you know, every time they upload a document, ask whether they want to post edit it. Uh, yes mean it will automatically allow them to uh, go into the post edit mode or no mean they would do the traditional machine translation flow where a document only uh, flow through the machine translation model for translation. For a demo, we'll click on ask. And in the ask here, you can see this is what the user would get asked. Would they like to submit the file for interactive translation editing? So here we'll go ahead and click yes. And now you can see that 
uh, in our demo, we have dropped a file for translation. The file is being translated right now, and it's a German press release being translated from German into English. When the file complete, now we have a new button that the user can choose uh, for those who are familiar with this interface, and that's the green button there. So click on this green button. We'll take the user over to the lightweight post-edit view where they can see the segment side by side. Um, and this is all happening behind the scene. You can see on the right-hand side there with the different color-coded segment means um, you know which segment was machine translated versus which segments were populated using the translation memory of the uh, TMS that is behind the scene. So any edits that the user do here, um, they can submit it within that post-edit view. And when they go back to the machine translation edge UI, they can download the file. And this file now will fetch the one that they had previously edited. And they would see the translation translated file in this original format with all the post-edit that they have done. And so another screen to just show you again how easy it is to enable this feature. Um, this is the interactive translation editor configuration within the Edge user interface. Um, and behind the scene, it is Group Share who's doing the orchestration of the translation management uh, flow. All right. And so what we managed to bridge using this feature was we bridge it together with a, a major feature that we released last year on our MT Edge, which is the LP adaptability um, or the trainer uh, feature in which our customers are able to train up a language pair model using our, their data all within their infrastructure so that they don't have to worry about their data being sent to a cloud provider or being sent outside their infrastructure. And so what we're able to bridge with that feature and this new interactive editor feature is this continuous adaptation uh, flow. So within the machine translation, it's automated, and it comes with generic model. Uh, when we send that document, and you know we have human who operate and who does edits and updates it, um, you know what we can bring into it is this data corpus um, that you can feed into the feature I mentioned earlier, our neural trainer, and the neural trainer then take that new updated updated file and build a customized model learning from the data of your corpus. And so this allow a continuous loop where you have the automated machine translation, you have your human resources who provide the review or the post edit uh, to improve that translation quality to get it to a better accuracy. And all of that can be looped back to train the machine translation and build that adapted model so that you can get this continuous adaptation cycle. And so for us, it's this virtuous quality cycle between machine translation, human feedback, uh, and translation management tools that allow you to continue to improve the machine translation quality of the system that you have on premise. And so with this, um, I would like to now walk you through uh, what is coming in terms of our product line? You know, what are some things that we are working on behind the scene um, that you can expect to see in the years to come? Um, and so behind the scene, SEO have been working on um, a continuously expanding set of what we call our linguistic AI capabilities. So linguistic AI for us represent technology, machine learning technology that help with language understanding language generation, language processing. And this are all interconnected. One, you know, they're all interweave. Um, and so within our linguistic AI capabilities, um, we've been uh, building uh, quite a few sets of capability, right? There's our neural MT 2.0 that we have talked extensively about and is the core backbone of our machine translation products. Uh, but behind the scene, we're actually working on a few other linguistic AI capabilities, um, such as the MT suitability, uh, language modeling, keyword extraction, um, complexity analysis of the source document, things like language identification, summarization. And basically, these are capabilities within our linguistic AI R&D that we will be bringing 
and productizing into the products that SDL put in the hands of our customer. And so you can see the products on the right hand side or products like SDL Machine Translation, um, SDL Content Assistant, SDL Language Cloud, SDL 3D and DX. And so in the years to come, we will be bringing these linguistic AI capabilities that we are brewing behind the scene and fitting them into the products that we offer to our customers to solve concrete business needs that these products uh, are solving for our customers. And so with the machine translation, where we are bringing the linguistic AI capabilities into the product, um, this is what we are calling our SEO MT evolution. Um, so where we are going with our MT evolution, um, it's more of expanding the capabilities while continue to focus on the customers that we have been prioritizing um, and the use cases that our customer have, uh, such as the secure internal communication and collaboration, enabling our a large corporation to provide a secure product for their users to get immediate translation needs, um, to also work with customers who focus on global content intelligence and al analytics, um, those who work with multilingual e-discovery, and those who need to use machine translation to help improve their customer experience strategy. So these continue to be our customer focus. Um, and our product direction will always focus on making sure whatever we deliver to our customer is enterprise ready. We give our customer the options of a cloud deployment or an edge deployment, and we also connected the two so that they can have an edge cloud um, connection for more flexible deployment and pricing. Uh, we always need to focus on making sure we're compliant with some of those regional policies. Uh, we've got to make sure our product is scalable um, so that we cater to the organizations that just need a few languages to organizations that need hundreds of languages. Um, the same with organizations that um, you know, only have a few active customers to those who have thousands of customers who's actively using the product. Uh, we gotta make sure we have the connectors so that it works seamlessly within our enterprise customer environment and that they're OEM friendly. But what do we mean with this machine translation evolution though? We are bringing our product to the next era, what we call the smart MT that delivers AI led insights for improved productivities and guided decisions for these customers that we are focusing on. So concretely, what this means is in terms of the capabilities, the linguistic AI capabilities that we are bringing into the product in the future, uh, we will bring in source content analysis, enabling you to get a high level understanding of what is in that source document that you're interested in, rather than having you read the entire document. And this enables you to understand things like, you know, is the source content um, have, have languages that are quite complex. Um, there's long languages, short languages, et cetera. Um, we're bringing into um, the feature that we call the intelligent adaptation. And it's more of a umbrella feature. And we already start delivering on some of these intelligent adaptation by bringing the interactive translation editor. So this umbrella of features refers to um, the machine translation model giving the users real time uh, options on what is the translation that they want to see in terms of the style, the tones, the domain, and also the ability to take in the user feedback and readapt its model so that it does not make the same mistakes again in the future. Um, we we'll continue improving our continuous adaptation services, uh, linguistic and quality assessment. Um, so, you know, bringing some of those linguistic AI capabilities that I covered earlier, such as, um, you know, complexity and parsing, uh, we'll bring it all together to deliver a feature that enable our users um, to get some insights about what the quality is um, so that these quality indicators can drive their decisions on what to do with the translation. Um, and of course, behind the scene, we'll continue to work on the features that we have already delivered to our customer, such as improving our generic neural models, um, you know, enabling that adaptive language pair capabilities so that it's easier to use, that it um, leverage your data even better than before, and improving on the workflow of the interactive editing. And so really in 
a nutshell, what exactly is this machine translation evolution path that we are on? So for us, our ambition is to be the only MT platform that will provide a comprehensive set of features that goes beyond the generic text in, text out translation that we have today with MT system. Um, and we want to do this because we have recognized that enterprises need a more modern productivity tool to assist their employees to digest that large volume of content that you have heard uh, Jane talk about, where content is just exploding so much that the time we have to consume the content and to digest to it, to find just the right piece of content that help us in our day-to-day -day jobs um, is becoming more and more difficult because the volume is just getting so much um, that we want to bring a tool that help you more quickly get to the most critical piece of content that can help you in your day-to-day. -day. And we want to help you do it also regardless of its format and regardless of the language of origin. And how we will do this is leveraging the SDL linguistic AI capabilities behind the scene, packaging it together and building workflows uh, that, that from a user experience that is intuitive, intuitive flexible, um, and cater to the specific use case that they have, uh, rather than giving you a basket of just of various capabilities in which you have to figure out how to apply to your day-to-day -day job. Um, so this is the SDL machine translation evolution. Um, this is where we're going in 2020 and beyond. Um, and stay tuned for how we start to roll out some of the features into our product. So at this time, I would like to pass it back to Jane to wrap up the presentation today. Great, thank you so much, Quinn. So uh, if you'd like to learn more, there's a couple resources that we have available um, and you'll also find them attached to this webinar. I believe you can download our Secure Machine Translation brochure, visit our website, and I strongly encourage you to join the SDL Machine Translation community. You'll see this webinar posted there along with a host of other content that should help you on your journey.